I'm Dr. Christopher Phillips. Uh, I'm a reader in international relations at Queen Mary University of London. And I'm here at the Imperial War Museum North uh, at an exhibition that I designed called Syria Story of a Conflict. Uh, it's been running here for a few months and before that it ran in the Imperial War Museum's uh, central location in London. The idea of the exhibition was to explain to the general public what the Syrian civil war is, how it came about, how it was internationalized, who's involved. It was designed actually as a, a, an accompaniment to a second exhibition uh, which displays wonderful photographs by the Russian photographer Sergei Ponomarev who uh, has been displaying his photos at the Imperial War Museum. And uh, the idea was that uh, alongside his photographs we would get uh, a sort of an educational component that explains to members of the public what the Syrian conflict is and how it came about. It was very important uh, for myself and the team at the Imperial War Museum when we designed this exhibition that we came at it from a relatively balanced perspective. This is a conflict that's incredibly divisive. Uh, people on both sides have very strong opinions and they're supported by conflicting, uh, contrasting media approaches that swear blind that their approach is the truth. We tried as much as possible, therefore, to uh, allow people the opportunity to make up their own mind, to sort of present facts as, as much as possible, but without simplifying things too much. We, we wanted to make sure that people understood the complexities of this conflict without necessarily coming down on one side or the other. I, I always said when we designed it that if they came away with one thing, I hoped it would be that they'd want to learn more about the Syria conflict and perhaps not take it for granted in the way that it's often presented in the media. It's often presented as a simplified conflict. You know, Sunnis fighting Shias or Iran fighting Saudi Arabia or the United States fighting Russia. And what we really wanted was for them to come away and understand actually no, this is far more complex. There are a lot of components to this conflict and it can't just be simplified into a simple slogan. The exhibition is um, broken into three main components. The, the first component is uh, a wall of items that are drawn from the conflict itself. I felt it was very important that people got the opportunity to s connect with the conflict by seeing items that have actually been in Syria or are related to the war. So this is a street sign uh, from uh, the a district of Aleppo uh, known as Jdeida and uh, we, we used it actually because it's absolutely covered as you can see in bullet holes, shrapnel scars uh, and it was actually an area that was heavily fought over in uh, the, the conflict between government forces and rebel forces on the boundaries between West and East and Aleppo. And one of the reasons we chose it was because it was donated to the collection by a resident of Aleppo who returned to the district uh, soon after it fell to uh, the government of Bashar al-Assad's forces in late 2016 and he picked it off the street and, uh, and lo looked at it and said he wanted to share it. And the thing about it is, is that it's, it, it actually represents what the city of Aleppo has gone through and what its residents have gone through. This was a district that I knew very well. I used to live in the city and would visit there quite a few times. It was a quite an upmarket neighborhood. It was a multi-faith. There was a, a, a church next to a mosque. There were a lot of uh, upmarket restaurants and hotels. And it's now been utterly devastated, rather like large parts of the city and its residents as well. So these cups and plates have uh, two images on them, one of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad, the other of Russian President Vladimir Putin. And we use them in the exhibition to illustrate how important Russia's role has been in uh, keeping Bashar al-Assad in power and allowing him to keep fighting this war. It's quite interesting how the, uh, the exhibit came about. We initially had this idea, uh, when I lived in Syria, I remember a lot of uh, propaganda uh, with Bashar al-Assad's face on mugs and cups and all this kind of thing. And I thought, wouldn't it be quite useful to bring that in to, to illustrate to the, the visitors to the exhibition that actually, for whatever reason, a lot of people did still support Bashar al-Assad. I mean, a lot of people support the opposition, but for whatever reason, people do support Assad as well. And the fact that they would buy and display these mugs and these cups was a sign of that. So we recommended to our researcher to go into Syria to, to try and get hold of uh, these mugs. And they came back with these 
pictures of Assad with Putin. And I thought, how oh, brilliant, that's actually even better because not only does it show how they feel about Assad, but also how they might feel about Putin as well and, and seeing him perhaps as a savior rather than how he's presented in the West as this sort of supporter of uh, a, a violent autocrat. Now, of course, as we show elsewhere in the exhibition, Assad and his regime have you know, committed many atrocities, but it is still important to recognize that for whatever reason, there are people inside Syria who do still support him and thank Putin for offering his support. This is a replica of a barrel bomb that we had made especially for the exhibition. Barrel bombs have been used by uh, the forces of Bashar al-Assad, dropped specifically on civilian areas. And as you can see from it, it's a rather nasty piece of kit. It is designed to be crude, it's designed to cause maximum civilian damage. It's a, uh, a, a, an oil drum which has been filled with explosive and scrap pieces of metal. It doesn't really have that much military value. It can't destroy a building or anything like that, like normal ordnance. Instead, what it's designed to do is instill terror in the population that live in a certain area in the hope that they'll either flee or surrender. And it really is kind of typical of the really nasty, gruesome side that this conflict has taken. And then we have uh, items such as a child's life jacket that was picked off a beach actually in Greece uh, from uh, children, uh, refugees that were fleeing the conflict into Europe. The, the second component uh, of the exhibition is a film that was written by myself uh, and put together by uh, the Imperial War Museum's partners, uh, Liminal, uh, which is a production company. And that is designed very much as a kind of educational tool to really explain in a very concise time period, only about eight minutes, uh, the origins and outcomes of the conflict. So it shows some of Syria's recent history. It talks about its colonial past, its complex demographic makeup, and then the uh, actual events that led to the outbreak of conflict in 2011. It then proceeds to talk about how external players got brought into the conflict, whether it be countries like the United States or Russia or Iran, or non-state actors like Kurdish militia and ISIS. This is probably my favorite part of the exhibition. This is the, the wall of stories, which shows a variety of different Syrian perspectives on the conflict and it was very important for me personally as someone that lived in Syria that this exhibition wasn't just an outsider's perspective that we actually gave a voice to the Syrians who have suffered this awful conflict and so we did a lot of research we worked with partners uh, groups like Amnesty International and the Red Cross to get a whole variety of different voices some from inside Syria some from outside and the outcome, the result, is this wonderful collection of stories that tell really different viewpoints. So, for example, the guy just behind me uh, is an Assad supporter. He lives on the coast in Assad's stronghold in Latakia. And he tells a story of how the soldiers, Assad soldiers, are heroes. They are fighting for people like him to preserve his way of life. And yet, right next to him, we have a lady who's a refugee. She lived in an area that was uh, in Damascus, that was supportive of the rebels. And so those same soldiers attacked that area and she fled to Jordan and now lives in a refugee camp. And for her, she sees those same soldiers as monsters, as the enemy that have come to sort of attack her and uh, push her from her home. And I really thought that was very important that visitors to this exhibition got the opportunity to see both perspectives, to see those that think the soldiers are heroes and those that think that they're monsters.